So hello, we're, we're Saad. Saad JV is the um, name on Companies House. The JV stands for Joint Venture and a little bit about us and, and where we came from. And then we'll, we'll jump in to e-rostering. So we are actually NHS owned. The reason it's got the JV on the end is it stands for Joint Venture. It was created um, in association with Oxleys. Um, the, the, the quick history of how I became an accidental company owner is that I was an engineer. Um, I met Phil down the pub, or actually I met Phil's colleague down the pub one night, and uh, he worked in the NHS trust called Oxleys out near Dartford, and they were having some IT software issues. And he said, and we got talking, and then uh, he introduced me to, to Oxleys and Phil's team, where I think they were doing some form of kind of software piracy down there. They were they were building things they shouldn't have been building and having great success in the process. And it was great fun um, building stuff with with Phil and the, and the rest of the NHS team there. And I sort of became part of the furniture and we had great success. Dr. Okocha, the medical director there, said, we've got this thing called revalidation. Uh, could you build something for that? So we built something for that. Dr. Okocha said to me, come and show this to my colleagues, um, the medical directors all over um, London. So we went and I thought it was going to be a nice little show and tell and, um, you know, NHS fluffiness, uh, come, and, come and show us what you've done sort of thing. And they turned around and said, oh, this is great. Can, can we buy it? And I was like, how much is it? And I was like, oh, I wasn't intending to actually sell it. I thought we were just here to sort of share knowledge or something. And then Dr. Okocha came away and said, actually, look, this is a really good idea. You've built a really good system for Oxleys here. Um, it'd be good for you and your software company. So let's create a joint venture. Phil got seconded from the NHS, where he was the learning and, and development manager there. And uh, we've never looked back. We're, so we're, we're born out of the NHS. We were, we were the, the love child of an engineering company and the NHS trust of Oxleys. Um, we went and created loads of really cool products. So we're NHS owned. Um, and over those 10 years, that was 10 years ago now, we're about to have our 10th birthday. Um, we've grown to have 50,000 users. We're in 50 plus trusts. I think we're in seven or eight or 10 of the um, Shelford Group trusts. So that's the big teaching hospitals, Kings, Guys. Um, Oxford Uni, you know, all the usual sort of big, big teaching hospitals were in the vast majority of them. We've grown to have 14 products. We started with medical revalidation, which is a system we built for Oxleys, and that very quickly expanded into, you know, MSF, job planning, e rostering, which we're presenting today, e leave, nurse revalidation, appraisal for all, consultancy services, team job planning. Um, you know, it's a big long list. We've got two strap lines, which is great technology and great customer service. Um, they're the things we aspire towards. It's also where we spend nearly all of our money. So um, if you look at our staff team page, people are basically either an engineer or they work in the customer support team. And and we don't have a big bloated sales team at Saad. We're, built, we're about building really good technology alongside a really good uh, customer service ethos. We're also really very much about partnership working. We started off as building a project for Oxleys that then expanded into all of these other projects. Everything else we've built has been built in partnership with a trust um, that have come to us and said, please, can you come and build this thing for us? Because we really like your other products in other places. And, and indeed, that's that's where this one's come from. And this is where e-rostering's come from. It's something we built in partnership with um, South London and Maudsley, um, which is the, the sort of largest mental health trust uh, covering um, South London, it's it's right opposite uh, King's College Hospital. Um, so we built it in conjunction with with them and the team there. As I said, all of the products have been built through partnership working, um, e-leave, job planning, uh, appraisal for all, nurse revalidation. We also have um, a real background in interoperability. We've been banging the interoperability drum for a very, very long time, you know, even back when we started 10 years ago, where API, which is um, basically the system by which uh, software systems talk to each other, um, that wasn't a very commonly referred to term back then. And, and the NHS didn't seem to know very much about APIs. Now they're all the rage. Every procurement tender that we do has got, have you got an API in it? And we said, yep, 
Yeah, yeah, we were doing APIs. We were, we were banging the API drum a long time ago. We've been we've been right behind APIs, and consequently, all of our systems are are connected up um, and work together as as one system. Our client list has really grown. As I said, we've got most of the Shelford Group trusts, um, but we also cover um, tiny little trusts like uh, uh, Tavistock and Portman, um, and, and smaller organisations um, up and down the country. Um, just something about the the kind of great customer support. Um, it does feed into how we how we deal with e rostering. Um, we we have a support model um, which is about making sure that our end users have direct contact with us and can speak to us directly. And the opposite of that is what we call the kind of lake of discontent. It's when you put a support dam or, or put barriers between your disgruntled clients uh, and yourself. And, and they and their problems do not go away ever. In fact, we were asked the other day by, um, by uh, on a sales call, um, are you sure you want to put a chat support system on because you know you're going to get a lot of a lot of demand on your on your system if you if you switch your chat support system on with, with our staff and we're like no we we never ever release any product to any staff group you know right from um healthcare assistants right through to to consultants and medical directors there's always a chat support um system in place because we don't want this 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 lake of discontent we don't want that support dam building up behind us um, so we always make sure it's really easy to speak to our our team so this is more like the sard tech um, customer support model we try to keep it free flowing and and as people come along with um, can the system do this can the system do that or how do i do my forgotten password reminder and and things like that we pick them up and and it means that the support team uh, can can pick up those requests and the engineering team can build the things that we need and it, and it keeps flowing. Right, so in terms of this actual webinar on, on e-rostering, um, I'm going to cover a number of things. One is what's under the hood. Um, so I'm going to talk about this sort of artificial intelligence engine that sits underneath it and you'll see a little bit of a magic show. Um, just some sort of uh, system housekeeping, then I'm going to take you through the administration section, the admin section, the organizational setup, duties, location, spots, how you set up rotors. Um, then I'll go on to show you the roster setup, availabilities, events, leave, warnings, reports, and then we'll see it more from the user side. So that's the, the prior part is administrators and how they interact with the system. And then we'll go on to the user section and, and how a user interacts with it. And then next steps from there. So are you ready for a magic show? I call it a magic soap because I think artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence engines are akin to magic. It's when you see a computer do something that you really were just not expecting them to do. And it really underpins how we how we run our roster in here at Saad. Why? What's the big deal? Why did we build eRoster in the first place? Well, because um, we had lots of happy clients with all of our other stuff and, um, you know, to to put it bluntly, there's one dominant supplier of these systems and most people are not happy with it. And they're, they're crying out for an alternative. And we actually took a bit of time to, to look at the technology, see what was available, see what was the best way to, to crack it and, um, and go from there. So we're building it because we've been asked to build it. Now, the way we approach e-rostering is what I think of as, as the future of e-rostering. Now, I don't mean that in terms of, um, you know, some marketing spiel that, that SARD is specifically the future of e-rostering. What I mean by that is that our product and the way it developed is what your e-rostering system is going to be like in the future. We're just doing that now. Every other company is going to be doing the same as SARD in, in five or 10 years time because that's what it's going to be. Now, the reason that it is different and the reason it is the future of e-rostering is a bit like trying to explain Netflix back in the era of blockbuster video. You know, we are in the era of blockbuster style e-rostering and yet the technology now exists to do the Netflix thing. The AI now exists to do the, the Netflix part of things. And so I'm going to go through and just sort of explain what that is almost sort of 
if you imagine you were Netflix trying to explain your product in the era of Blockbuster, you'd have to explain the internet really, because otherwise all of your customers would be saying, how do I return my video? Where do I, where do I post it back? Where's your post box? You know, where do I buy my popcorn and things like that? It, it, the technology actually changes how you go about rostering and, and how you deliver it. And as I say, it's the future. So I'm, go I'm going to delve into to why we're moving into the era of Netflix and why why Saad and Saadi rostering is is your inevitable future with whether with us or, or someone else. But why not go with us because we're doing it now? So what's changed since forever? You have been able to do this on a computer. What what's the big inventive step that's happened in computer science? that allows us to, to tackle this differently in a way that you couldn't have done 10 years ago. Um, well, about five or six years ago, I went to a programming conference and uh, for years, I've been able to see computers do, do the first calculation, two plus three equals, you can put it in your calculator, hit the buttons, hit the two, hit the plus, hit the three, hit the equals and bang, it'll come out of an answer. About six years ago, I went to a programming conference and I saw a computer do the this hmm different well yeah it actually is very different you can't put the second one in, into a computer you can take your calculator out on your phone and you can do the first one easily try and do the second one what would you do well you'd have to rearrange things you'd have to go oh five minus two and then hit the equals button but what have you done you've rearranged it you've actually had to apply some intelligence to the, to the calculation in order to work out how to do it and so that's why it was so impressive for, for me to see this. You First one, you're telling it what to do. Second one, you say, here's my end state. Here's where I want to get to. Here's the things I start with. What's the thing in the middle? If that seems a bit esoteric, then think of it this way. If you're trying to make a cake, maybe you get eggs, butter, flour. You add them all together and you get your cake. In the new world, do the things you have to do to make me a cake. You know, I don't really care. This is the end state. Here's what I want to get to you artificial intelligence go off and work out how to get me there what might that look like for rostering well let's think about the end state you've got 300 hip replacements 2450 wall rounds 31 days you've got 128 consultants 322 ahps two mris 40 wards 304 junior doctors you know here's all the component parts here's where i want to get to in the end here's what i've got to deliver what is the roster that will get me to that place so it's a very different way of thinking of things and um, that's what the artificial intelligence allows us to do. It is a specific type of artificial intelligence. It's called constraint solving. Um, if you've ever done a Sudoku puzzle, you've done a constraint solving problem. So in Sudoku, all the numbers have to be different in each row. Every number has to be different in each column. Every number has to be different in, in each square. So you've got three constraints. And actually, you can take the AI system that we use for rostering and get it to solve Sudoku puzzles. You can also get it to sort out your wedding seating plan. So you could say, I want this person to sit next to this person, or I want everyone with kids to sit next to each other, or those people politically are quite apart, or I don't want a divorce couple. Oh, I could match make those two people, so I want them on the same table. So you're feeding in all of these constraints. It's a very similar thing in, in hospital rostering. You know, perhaps you need somebody in... Um, a pediatric setting or, or a CAM setting in mental health where they need a safeguard and children qualification. So, you, you know, they must have this thing and it's another constraint on the system. Um, or it's someone's wedding um, on on a certain period of time. So you don't want them doing on-call shifts when, when it's supposed to be their wedding and they, they need to take leave. Or you want, you want a certain configuration of um, people with skills together doing one particular activity. So you can fit any of those constraints together. Um, just to sort of show you how much faster and how more efficient um, doing using the constraints solving system on AI is. Um, I just show you this is an AI solver doing um, going around all of the cities in Europe. So these are the 40 cities in Europe and you're just trying to go around it in the shortest period possible. Now when we do this this number down here normally gets to about 230,000, 260,000. Um, it's probably about the shortest route that I can I can go around and visit every city. If I get the constraint solver or the artificial intelligence to do it, you'll see here, it will keep looking 
for faster and faster routes. It started off at like 230, it's very quickly got down to 218, 217, and eventually it'll get down to something like 216,000. So it's solving it much, much faster uh, and um, to a greater extent than any human possibly can. Now, I, I realize that this is traveling through cities of Europe, but actually, it does apply to to things like rotors. So instead of going through cities, maybe you've got your rotor positions and actually you want to travel through sort of placing certain doctors in the first row and visiting that doctor first, and then you're visiting another doctor second and another doctor third and fourth and fifth. And this is the same system that underp underpins our rostering. Now, when we do this, when we've tried to do this, this um, visiting the cities, we got to, on the team, I think we got to 259 for Francesca, sorry to embarrass you there, 260, Rob got 230, I got I got 217 and I'd seen the answer and I think I, before then I got about 230,000. So the computer does way better, perhaps sometimes in the order of about 20% better. Now, when that applies to rostering, you're talking about a four day week instead of a five day week. You know, you're, you're taking into all of account all of those constraints. It's actually a considerable cost saving in terms of time and making sure you're not using, um, overly using kind of locum doctors and things like that. So let me show you that applied to rostering now. This is a um, very early prototype of the system that we use, is using actually an older version of the artificial intelligence system um, uh, using a, something called OptiPlanner by, by Red Hat. Um, this is one of our early prototypes and indeed this is one of the things that we showed to South London Maudsley when we first started partnering with them about just how how effectively AI, AI and constraint solving could be used to help solve your rotors. So here we have a, um, a shift roster system and we have a number of unassigned shifts um, across uh, across the week here. And we have um, a number of employees as well uh, and their skill sets. And over here we have a, a, an availability roster. So for each of those people we can say oh on Tuesday there's they, they want to work on that Tuesday, the February 26th. They, they don't want to work there. They're actually unavailable. This person here, Amy Green, is unavailable on Thursday, February 28th. And so, you know, she definitely can't work a, uh, a shift. And so you put in, in all of your all of your constraints or all of your availabilities for, for the roster. And then you can go back to the shift roster. And much like we did with traveling around the cities, I hit a button here and it will take a first guess. And it will try and improve that guess and try and improve the performance of the roster all the time. Now, up here you see a score and it's dropping and dropping and dropping. Imagine that is your locum doctor budget. It's, it's basically searching for better and better uh, rosters that fit with the availability of your staff and their demands and, and things like that. Um, so to give you an example of something uh, specific uh, constraint that it would it would want to solve for uh, at South London Maudsley, they don't um, want any of their CT1s to be rostered on the first week of a rotation. So they will say, um, if you if you newly arrived at the hospital, or you're a new starter, and it comes around to that first Wednesday in August we don't want you on on call because you might not know where the car park is you might not know the layout of the building the whole thing's new to you so we put that in as a constraint and the system will search through to make sure that it doesn't put any ct1s in the first week of, of the rotation but it's also taking into account all of their availabilities and, and and everything else now the reason i'm showing you the the prototype of the system and and not our, our currently running system is that we actually switched the artificial intelligence on the system uh, midway through development and switched it over to a Google AI system. And this sped up by about a hundredfold, which left us with a marketing dilemma because you can't actually see it solving anymore because it just did it like that and just swapped. <laughs> so it sped up so fast that you can't really see it thinking and you can't really see the magic anymore, which is a bit of a shame in my opinion. But you know it does solve it faster so i guess that's a good thing um so here is the 
um, system as it is today. Um, we're on a staging server here. I've logged in as an administrator on the system. So if you're an administrator, you, you can see the number of users on the system. You can see shift swaps. You can see things like leave periods. You can see warnings. So you can see how many overlapping shifts there are, sick cover, um, shift swaps where the users changed, any mandatory assignments, um, users who are over the maximum working hours per week. Um, so that there are all sorts of warnings in here. And this is the thing about SARD's rostering. We don't we don't actually have rostering as individual products. So I know some companies are like, here's our nurse rostering system, or here's our uh, junior doctor rostering system, or you know, here's our activity rostering system. Um, it doesn't matter because actually the the AI doesn't doesn't really care. And what we do is we apply the rules for that particular group. So at South London Morsley, they have a lot of junior doctors and it will apply the junior doctor contract rules. And those, those are the things that will check in terms of the warnings on here. So it's got all of those warnings in there. Don't worry about this debug thing. That's just because I'm on a demo site. So it's just telling me that, that I'm on a Mac. That doesn't show up on, on, the, on the real system. Um, they also, the administrator can obviously see all the users. They can see things like leave periods. They can see events that happen, you know, Christmas, bank holiday, particular um, Diwali, things like that. They can see all the shift swaps. They have duties, so I can click on duties here and it will show you um, the name of the duty, the short name, the start time, the location, you know, whether it's a long night or early morning or whether it's a day shift, whether it's an on-call shift or in the case of um, uh, mental health, there are these place of safety shifts here. Um, so that's the duties. You can also structure the locations, um, but this could be anything. I mean, SARD is a very configurable system, so it can be boroughs, but it can be directorates, it can be specialties, it can be specific teams, it can be a, a hospital rather than, you know, a borough. Um, it's very, very configurable, and so you can create this sort of tree structure of, of your own organization within it. You can see things like on call. We have um, rotations. So by rotations, we mean each kind of six month section, a, a new set of rosters as they come out, which are, is probably quite familiar to everybody here. Um, you know, the, the classic August and February rotation are covered in here, and then there will be a number of rosters within, within that rotation. There's the rosters themselves. There's the the warnings on all of those systems, you can go through and see what um, what's actually happened on those warnings. You know, Rufus Corona has exceeded the maximum 48 hours per week. You can see things like agencies and stuff like that. But when you actually get into the meter system, um, you're going to look at rotors. So let me just take you through kind of rotor setup first. Here we've got a um, some standard rotors. So if I just take you to one and I can show you, let's do this one. So this is actually based on um, some South London Morsley data, but it's all been obfuscated and we've, um, you know, we've removed all the names and things like that, but this is based on, on, on real data. Um, so they have all of the duties at the top here on, on the rotor. So you can see there's, there's a, day shifts and then there's the long nights and long days and um, and then with, whether they're on call or whether they're place of safety shifts and then there's the rotor weeks here so um, you can see in this first week here it's a day shift Monday Tuesday Wednesday and then there's a gap and then there's a night shift night shift night shift but then because you've done three night shifts then it's a, a gap and a gap um, to give you recovery time um after the night shifts and then back on onto day shifts there and then so each doctor will flow through that pattern and um where i was showing going through the cities you imagine that basically when you're picking uh instead of picking order of cities you're picking the order in which you go through each each doctor and it's optimizing for that the ai system is is trying to optimize for which doctor to place or, or nurse or ahp into each rotor week position to match their availabilities to rematch whether you know it's a ct1 doctor in the first week and things like that and it's going to be optimizing that score down and down and down so that hopefully you're not scheduling people for on call shifts 
um, when they plan to be on holiday or when it's, you know, when they've got an exam or something like that. It will take into account all of those things. Um, so also on the rotor is the, the compliance as well. So you can see the compliance data. It will check through in the case of, of this one, it's checking compliance against um, the junior doctor contract rules. So no more than 72 hours actual work should be undertaken in any working pattern in any period, 168 consecutive hours. Result, yeah, 60.75, the rule's okay. Um, and it will check through all of these rules. And there's um, also WTR compliance. So no doctors to work more than an average 48 hours per week. And it will, will check for all the rules there. We also have the salary breakdown of this rotor. So remember, this isn't a roster. There's no specific doctors on this rotor. There's no doctors have been assigned to a particular week. So it's just indicative of um, what the salaries would be if you had uh, like an ST1 in that position or an ST3 so that you can feed that that information through to payroll. Um, there's also a stats page. So on the stats page, it will show you the breakdown of, of night shifts, long day weekday shifts and long day weekend shifts. Um, on here, there's um, quite a lot of information that you can get out of here and you can export all of this stuff out to, to CSV as well. Um, this last tab here is the builds. So you start with your rotor pattern and then you would then assign certain um, staff members to each week in that rotor pattern and the result and action would be that you'd, you'd create a roster from that rotor. So the nice thing about SARD is all of this is all under one system. There's not some separate rotor system. There's not some separate leave system. There's not some separate payroll system. Everything falls under this, this one system here, including the rosters and the rotors. Um, so we can see here that there's there's been a roster built from the um, from the rotor. Um, the roster's got a name. It's got some dates between it. Um, we can say which rotation it's in, and we can say the build type. So in this particular instance, it's been manually picked. So you can actually remove the AI. You don't have to have the AI sort of suggesting things. Although I do recommend it because, as I said, it's far more efficient than than humans. Um, if if you if you can figure the rules correctly, um, the AI will will come out with better better answers than any human possibly could. Um, or you can assign one user per week based on based on the AI essentially based on availabilities and and other rule constraints. Um, then you can say which employees uh, are based on this rotor so we can see that there's like the current grade and um, which rotor position they're on and the assignment and which weeks they ended up being in and then you can see on this last pit here is the roster the resultant roster that comes out of that and it will load that up if i click on this here i can go to the actual roster and i can get even more information so this is the roster that was built from it this roster will show you um, the name of it, what state it's in. Um, so there, there is a kind of um, review process. So you can have draft rotors, you can send them off to the BMA, or you can share them with, you know, uh, uh, ST leads and, and um, a junior doctor reps and things like that, that can then um, have a look at the, the rosters before they're put out there and we can, you can give them access. And then they can be reviewed through and as a review process. It will show you all of the warnings that's on that roster. You can also see the actual shifts, um, obviously. And when I click on the shifts here, uh, you can see uh, a week's view of all the shifts. You can see all, any unassigned shifts that are in there. So you can see there's a, there's a couple here, a uh, long day one, and then a, a day shift here, and a long day here that were unassigned. And of course, they will come up as warnings and um and it will it will notify the administrators that that there needs to be cover for that shift and so you can see here there's a there's a locum doctor that is placed on on this shift here so that would have been assigned either by like an ai system or or more commonly to be honest uh, an administrator on the system would have put that in place um you can also have a, a kind of a longer month view 
of everything. So if I scroll through, we're looking at August, but if I scroll through to the present day, obviously these are all ghosted out a little bit um, because it's in the past. Oh, I just mentioned there, there's a leave there. So, and, and the reason for that leave, and so it will, it will unassign all of those shifts for that person and notify that, that that needs to be covered. So there's funeral leave or there's annual leave here and, and it will again notify things. I just thought I'd mention that just as I pass through. Um, as you get to the current month, so in October, you can see there's all the ghosted shifts that have already happened. And then there's, there's the week ahead. You can do things like click on here and um, uh, do things like re reassign shifts. You can create sickness on them. You can view an audit trail. You can see everything that's ever happened to that, that shift. You can see who's in the team, who else is on that day, who's working with them. You can unassign it and, th and things like that. There's, there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of functionality built in from this page. You can, of course, um, filter to just things like the on call shifts as well. So you're not seeing all of the, the day shifts. Um, you can do things like uh, less than full time uh, shifts as well and, and show up uh, all of that information. On here is the stats page for the roster. So we saw the stats page for the rotor. Um, this is the stats page for the roster. So it will break it down and actually show you things like the less than full time equivalents, how many hours they've done, how many day shifts they've done. So you can actually just double check. I mean, the AI will do this for you, but you can double check that, um, that there's a proportionate amount of night shifts based on their less than full time equivalent um, positions. There's the the warnings as I went through, there's this bulk actions. Now bulk actions, uh, as I said, a lot of our systems are partnership working, so we build them in conjunction with people. Um, bulk actions was actually developed during COVID because um, there was a sudden immediate need to do things like uh, unassign a whole load of shifts from someone who had to isolate because of COVID. And so we'd have to take them off the system for two weeks and, and then suddenly reassign them to someone else. So. There is a load of bulk actions in here. Um, we also had a load of GPs come online sort of halfway through a rotation. So there was a lot of bulk action um, reassignment and things like that there. You can also have budgets. So you can have cost centers for each um, uh, area and uh, currency and where it was costed to. You can have those budgets spread across certain rosters or you can have multiple rosters for each budget or multiple budgets for each roster. Um, as I said, it's a very configurable system, so there's lots of different ways that you can cut things. Um, so that's it more from a um, from the sort of administration perspective. So this is where you construct the rosters, um, put the shifts together, generate the rosters, uh, set out your duty types and your locations. But then, of course, there's the view from the other side which is an individual user coming onto the system. So if I click on here, I'm just going to grab a, a user of the system. Who do we have? Yeah, let's go Leon. Uh, so Leon CT2. And I hit the impersonate button. And we can see what it looks like for Leon. So when Leon logs into the system, um, she's going to see her on-call list, so she can see when her next on-call is. She can see all of the upcoming on-call um, shifts that, that she has. The next shifts as well. Um, any shift swaps they've put in. So there'll be a shift swap here. I can click on that and you can see what, what the nature of that shift swap was. There's a, obviously an approval process for this as well. So, you know, it doesn't just allow it straight through. There's normally an administrator or a reviewer that has to, to allow that through. Um, and then uh, in the case of South London Morsley, they have these uh, place of safety shifts, but you can have any other type of uh, sort of specific shift or something that's particularly of, of, of importance that you want to highlight. Um, so they can see my shifts as well so they can essentially see their calendar and just see a calendar view of, of what's happening on on a month by month basis um the from here there is this subscribe calendar button so they can 
um, make sure that it's imported into their work calendars or it can be imported um, as is the case of myself I've you know we've got a family calendar so my wife and I share a calendar you can you could subscribe um, your calendar to that and in fact um, at an NHS hack day I met um, somebody uh, who who was a slam junior doctor just by coincidence I went all the way to Cardiff for this NHS hack day at the weekend and there was a uh, one of the South London Morsley doctors was there and he said oh did you build our rostering system it was really good oh and we got chatting on the train on the way back he's a tech enthusiast as he would be because he was at NHS hack day and he um, wrote a little guidance note about how his colleagues could subscribe their calendars and how to set that up and created this sort of document. And I really think that kind of shows a sort of partnership working and how, how SARD works more generally. You know, we're not, we're not, we don't have like a bloated sales team. We don't just sell products and just move on. We're very much about really getting to know our clients, really getting to know their needs and building up relationships with them and, and, and taking feedback from them and building the product together. Um, so that, that's the sort of subscribe calendar functionality that, that's particularly useful, I think, to, to the individual doctors because they can, they can look it up on their phone very quickly and, 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 and actually their partners and wives and husbands can, can look that up too. Um, they can also see the shifts of everybody else that is um, working alongside them so they can kind of see the context of it. They can see, you know, who else is working on those shifts or in those locations. Um, so you could grab a particular location and say, um, and it will filter that down by that that location. Oh, I just happened to buy, pick a location that's got nothing in it. But yeah, anyway, the point is you can you can filter by location and it will show you everyone who's working in that particular place. You can also see all the locum doctors that are on there and, and things like that. Um, one other way to look at this is what we call spots. Um, so spots is a sort of terminology from general rostering, as in factory rostering and things like that. Um, if you imagine a spot, be like a uh, a spot is a, is a place you expect somebody to be to be doing something. So it comes from really factories. You know, if you imagine a car production line, you need someone doing the left headlight and you need someone doing the right headlight and you need someone doing you know the rear rear tire and fitting the exhaust and things like that. So it's like tell me somewhere where someone must be and what time they must be and someone needs to go and stand on that spot. So spots is a way uh, of looking at that data from a slightly different perspective. So here you can see the spots are nine to five shifts, so basically day shifts. And then there's a spot of doing a, a long day at Pine Place um, and a night at Pine Place and a place of safety at Pine Place. And then you can look through and you can see, you know, is this a, a locum user here or who, who's been placed in here as well um, to do that particular shift. They can also see the on-call list. So there's another example of partnership working. When we first started working with SLAM, there was this thing where to be able to work out who was on call and get their contact details, they had to go back through switchboard. And we we did this sort of process of um, going in and saying, look, what, what do you do each day? What, what are the things that are time consuming to you? And one of the things that kept coming back was, oh, you know, phoning up switchboard to find out who's on call and what their mobile number is and how do I contact them was really painful. So we put all of that into the system. It's all hidden here because obviously it's been obfuscated, but um, they could quickly see uh, the contact details. And in fact, they could download a PDF and, and show on call lists and perhaps put it on a, on a ward or, or somewhere where, it, where it's convenient. Or this could be downloaded and sent off to Switchboard so they have that information without any um, transcribing errors and things like that. There's also um, on call calendars. Um, so you can see all of the on call shifts um, specifically. There's a notification section here as well. Um, there's uh, shift swaps, so uh, we briefly saw that, but you can create a new new shift swap and swap out shifts um, and have them approved on here and it will, will juggle them around and, and keep an audit trail of, of what happened to those shifts and, and update all the stats and payroll accordingly. Um, the impossible to pronounce shift swap shop 
um, which is basically saying I do want to do I don't want to do the shift or um, I do want to do the shift so you can look up shift assignments and and say yeah mark is available I'm I'm happy to do that one and so it will it will basically create a marketplace of, of shift swaps on on the system um, as I said this is actually uh, obfuscated um, slam data and so what was quite nice on this one is that this person actually did have their wedding in in April and um, so the AI would have taken that into account so they would not have been working along call shift on the 8th of April to the 9th of April it would have worked around that and made sure that 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 particular week of the rotation it didn't put them in that place and it would have tried to do you can see the priority here it would have tried to have done the same same here so if it's your birthday or something you know maybe it's not going to give you your your time off but if it's your wedding yeah damn right you're going to get your time off and it's going to be a hundred percent and it, and it's going to account for that um so that's the system it's a very um there's there's a whole load of things i could show you um and go into real detail around budgets and things like that and care hours per patient day for for nursing um exception reporting there's a whole a ho there's a whole host of things um uh, generic workforce templates and and things like that that you can extract out of the system there's also a link up between uh leave modules absence management attendance and feeding that data back into esr and um, we've got a really good as we've mentioned on on previous webinars where we've been working on the esr wrapper we've got a very good relationship with the nhs esr team um, and making sure that our products integrate with the esr data so put in attendance and absence information how that then that that then filters through into payroll um, so there's a whole load of other stuff that obviously you can't really do in in the, in the short space of of one presentation but obviously we'd be happy to to speak to people individually and go through there through any specific areas of interest that they have um, just one last thing to mention the live support online all our systems as i said that lake of discontent we never want that building up in the background um, uh, i should actually explain i'm not leon i am it's actually going um, so we've got the the chat system on here which is available to everyone administrators doctors so joe's coming back here um, so um, they're always available in fact we seconded um, one of our customer support team over to south london and mortsley to actually work with their rostering team to see how it all actually works in the background um, so that's kind of it um, any other questions i guess we go to questions now um yeah did i get to the questions I did get to the questions oh here's a lovely picture of our team here so basically we're not we're not a massive company i think we have 25 um people in the company the the talent in this team we had our, our user event the other day the talent uh, the loyalty um, experience and talent in this team is absolutely exceptional and basically I just can't wait to release these people on on the wider NHS because we, we really can improve things so thank you very much any questions Get my hand up. Yes, no. yeah <laughs> Okay. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, I wonder if you, you talked a lot about doctor rostering and rotors. So yeah. I, I know that junior doctors tend to have a rotor that they have for the six to eight months that they're in um, in a rotation. Yeah. Obviously, nurses don't tend to have that sort of thing. So w will the AI just look at a template and say, right, we don't have a rotor. These are the shifts that need to be covered. This is what this is what I'm going to do with it. Uh, yes, you don't need to. You don't need to have the rotor in there. In fact, um, <laughs> I feel like rotors are a leftover from the days before we had AI, and mm -hmm. it's easier for the AI to work without the rotors and to just say these are the shifts I need to fill, and here is all the qualifications and availabilities of the staff. Go do it. Um, right. Like mm -hmm. the the rotors. If if I had a magic wand, 
we would wave it and rotors would just disappear. They're a, they're an anachronism. We don't need them anymore, including for junior doctrine, in my opinion. But yeah. um, I'm not going to change the NHS overnight, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was, that, I was just worried. Yeah. Did that, that answer your question? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. But I'd, I'd love to talk to you more about nurse nurse rostering because mm -hmm. you know it's a different setup. Yeah. Yep. Uh, is it Mark? Yes. Hi. Hello. Um, uh, it's a it's a great system. Um, Thanks. Really, really great system. Um, can I just ask, so a user, so for example, a junior doctor, can they input their own requests for leave, etc., or does it have to go still go through an administrator to approve it? Can they or can they just put them direct, no, directly? They can, put, they can put their own um, annual leave requests into the system. And in fact, the e-leave module will take into account things like job plan if it, if it is a doctor, although we do do all team job planning as well. Um, yeah, they can put the request in there or they can prior to the roster being generated, they can put in their availabilities and say, I plan to go on holiday here and then you set the priority. Um, but what what's quite nice about the AI is that it doesn't is very egalitarian in its distribution because it's a machine and so it's not friends with any particular staff member right and also it it can find things that a human can't so yes everyone wants august off um except everyone who doesn't want august off and actually those people do exist and those people who perhaps want to go on holiday when they when it's not the school holidays and they can get cheaper flights and things like that and so it will roster those people in the on-call shifts in that in that August period. Same with things like Christmas. Yes, lots of people want Christmas off. But actually, there's the person who wants Diwali off or there's the person who wants Eid off. And actually, they're more important sort of family holidays to them. And therefore, it will tend to put those people into those positions. So it really improves work-life work balance. And it is, it's actually almost sort of, uh, that sounds really funny, but it's almost emotional, I think, seeing people's requests come through. It's my dad's 60th birthday or, you know, and and to see it trying to work things out in order to accommodate those requests is it genuinely helps the work life balance of your staff. Hopefully it means that there's a lot, lot less sickness absence and a lot less need for sort of locum docs and things like that. Sorry, that was a long answer to a short question, but <laughs> hopefully that answered it. Yeah. So, so for example, if um, someone puts a leave request in, can this will the computer then look at what everyone else is doing and say yes, you can have that leave or no, you can't have it? Um, the AI tends to kick in before the sort of for the rostering section um, before prior to the rostering being done. So I think what tends to happen is the AI has less influence actually when the roster is running because obviously it could optimize it, but it might mean optimizing it by shifting 20 people around or something like that, which you know you don't want to have to go and tell 20 people to change their shifts in order to fit someone's holiday request in. So that there's more of a, the, we, we call it Centaur rostering, which is um, essentially, look, the AI will do a lot of, lot of the hard work for you. It's the back legs of the Centaur, um, but you, you do still need human guidance up front um and so it's it's a mixed mode of not just letting the ai run rampant because we've we've seen what happens when when you just let computers control everything they're a bit stupid in some ways and yet in other ways you you want people to override things so it on the day to day if they come along and, and request something and they can't fit them in it's probably going to be an administrator doing that not the ai but if it's prior to the roster being generated it's probably the ai going to work it out Okay. Did that, that answer? Yeah, no, that, that answers it. Thank you. Yeah. Is it Sarah? Um, so it's on a similar um, thread as Mark. So so if somebody was to put in their leave request, so the, the rote is live, uh, they're putting it into the system. Does it suggest potential swaps to that doctor? So does it say who can it can it check the compliance on the rotor and suggest potential doctors that they could swap their shifts with which should also continue to make them compliant i guess um i think uh, not really to be honest because 
it's already sort of optimized it. So if anyone comes up with something better, I think it almost sort of is like, why are you changing that? Because I've I, yeah. <laughs> I found I'm the just, optimal path. So yeah, because... so I'm just wondering if that still kind of sits in the hands of the rotor. So at the moment, obviously, if a rotor's live, somebody puts in an annual leave request, the rotor coordinator will then have to go through the rotor, look at whether there are potential swaps and kind of work that through. I just wondered whether the system took a little bit of that out of their hands and said, well, actually, yeah, it there's these people that would yes. be available. Oh, yeah, no, actually, available. there is. Yeah, there is there is some amount of suggestion of who would be who would who fits the rules for that. Yeah. So these this person is not assigned to a shift, or or this person is not currently doing an on call shift, and therefore they're they're available on possibles. You know, when it's doing that constraint solving, is yeah. um, if you ever use like one of those Sudoku solvers or something, it's sort of assisting you. Or I don't know if you ever played Scrabble online or something. You know, it's like. How about these words? Oh, <laughs> you know, it's not it's not doing it. It's not doing the whole thing for you, but it's suggesting. It's suggest, maybe. yeah, no, and that's that's absolutely right. And the other, just because you were talking about the e leave e leave module, is that a separate module then to your um, e rostering module? So you'd have to buy the two together if yeah, you want to we, use the annual can, leave element. We can provide it as as one. Really, I mean, it, I think it's quite rare. It, Slam use use our e leave, so it, it's never come up as a question um it yeah we we'd provide it as one system okay. i think phil phil's not gonna not in his head here because he's I'd, I'd give everything away for free because i'm just, <laughs> I just build it things, just makes sense to have it, them but, together so it's just is it usually done as one module yeah yeah it's essentially one module but they communicate with each other and it also communicates with with job planning and does things like accruals and allowance and uh study leave and, and all of that sort of management great thank you Yes, uh, Rory, a fellow Kent man. Yes, yeah. man. Um, so at our trust, we have a large uh, bank of temporary workers. And in fact, all our substantive staff are on that bank as well to work additional yeah. hours. So does SARD have something that can accommodate that? Um, we are looking at bank staff integration at the moment. I don't know, is that, is that a local bank system or? It's through allocate. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. the the um yeah, sorry, don't you can use dirty words here. <laughs> <laughs> um so I think that you know, things like bank staff and bank staff plus where where possible we will we will connect to to those systems. Um but we do have eyes on integrating with other bank staff providers and indeed sort of developing and, and pushing along with with our own offer in there. Um that's probably one to have a conversation sort of outside of this webinar. Yeah, maybe. That's fine. <laughs> Don't want to give um, all our commercial away. That's right. <laughs> um, my second question is you mentioned about the ESR wrapper. Um, how does that compare to BI that's provided by ESR itself? Like, is it easier to use or is it similar kind of thing, but just a bit more user friendly? um yeah it's it's a system that allows other systems to talk to esr so we speak we speak closely i mean there is the esr wrapper webinar so perhaps it perhaps will send that to you and it sort of describes in more detail what what that is about mm -hmm. it is a different thing to the esr bi system mm -hmm. and in fact the esr team took our esr wrapper and and had a go at installing it locally and they've started developing their own API based on some of the ideas within there, I believe. So yeah, does that answer you? Uh, I think it's probably best if we send you the wrapper webinar, Rory. Sorry, I, I had a look on the website this morning and I found the presentation, so I've got it already. Brilliant. Perfect. Thank you. That's all right. Yeah. Any other questions? Otherwise I'm going to be bang on time. That's not right. <laughs> I think I think that's it. Um, Fran, do you want to mention our next webinar in the date? Are you there? Might get some feedback when I start speaking just because I'm in the same you. room as Kevin. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry. Um, our next webinar is on the 4th of November, Thursday, the 4th of November um, at 11 a.m. And that is on our uh, job planning system specifically for doctors, our medical job planning module. Um, be very nice to see some of you there.
Yeah, so if any if, if any of you know colleagues, if it's not yourself, then just let them know. We'll happily send out details. Um, I think that's probably about it. Yeah. Just so we've been making um, big headway into uh, team job planning at the moment. Um, so if team job planning sits in your area of interest, then please get in contact with one of our team as well. We can we can take you through that um, because I, I know there's a lot of people interested in that at the moment. Cool. Well, thank you for coming and uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kev. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.